Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at proving trigonometric identities so we can answer questions from exercise 7f. So just a reminder that with trig identities that we um, the, the main basis of this is to prove that left hand side is equal to the right hand side or right hand side is equal to left hand side to show that the two expressions are equal to each other. We can't move things from one side to the other. We can't add to or divide by cos or anything like that. We just have to work with one side of our trigonometric identity and rearrange it using trig identities, maybe simplifying some algebra at some point, expanding brackets is good. Times in top and bottom of a fraction by some amount is also a good way of keeping something equivalent but changing the values of it um, until it equals the other side. And generally, it's a good advice to follow um, that you pick the more difficult side and rearrange it and simplify it into something that is a little bit more easy or a little bit more compact. So this is where we're going to start in this trig identity here. We're going to start with the left-hand side. And we've got 2 sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2 times cos theta. Quite a lot happening here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're not used to dealing with these sine theta over 2s and cos theta over 2s, but it roughly does, if you look at this part here, it roughly does look like the sine double angle rule, just with a different angle. Effectively, you're taking the sine double angle rule and halving all of your angles. So in this case here, we're going to get sine theta is equivalent to 2 sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2. So what we can do here is we can replace 2, cos theta, two, two sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2 with just bog standard sine. Okay, so we're using a half angle rule here. This may be something that you may want to take a note of. Don't rem you don't necessarily have to remember it, but just remember that with the sine double angle rule, you can half all of your angles until you get a half angle rule. Okay, so the next thing to do now will be to um, think about what we've got here. We've got sine theta cos theta, and that rings the bell of sine 2 theta again is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So if we divide both sides by 2 in this identity, which we are allowed to do, because uh, it's not the main identity that we're trying to prove, we see that sine theta cos theta is equal to half sine 2 theta. So what we've got here is equal to half sine 2 theta. Okay, so that's just taking the sine double angle rule and halving both sides, which we're allowed to do. We're allowed to rearrange little sub-identities. Uh, we're not allowed to rearrange um, any of these main identities that we're trying to prove. Okay, so that's the first one there. We're going to move on to a series of more trig identities to see different ways or different methods in which we can use to um, simplify trig identities. Um, these types of problems here often require you to start with a relationship you know and modify it in some way. This is a prime example of taking an identity that you know and then modifying it in some way. Okay, so for example, halving all of the angles inside the identity. Okay, next question then, 1 plus cos 4 theta equals 2 cos squared 2 theta. So start with a more difficult side. Probably I want to be able to use the cos double angle rule to get it down from 4 theta to 2 theta. So I think in this case I'm going to start with the left hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cos double angle rule, cos 2 theta equals 2 cos squared theta minus 1, but that's not ideally what I'm looking for, ideally I'd have a cos 4 theta, so instead of halving the angles like we did in the previous example, I'm going to double both of the angles in this identity. And that will give me cos 4 theta is identical to 2 cos squared 2 theta minus 1. So what I'm going to do then is replace cos 4 theta in my identity here with 2 cos squared 2 theta minus 1. And now the minus ones will cancel out, so that's a nice easy bit of simplification. And then all of a sudden, the left-hand side that we have here is equal to the right-hand side at the end of this trig identity. 
Okay, so that's again another example in which we've taken a, an identity that we know and just manipulated it in some way so that it fits better into our trig identity that we're trying to prove. Okay, a fraction one. Now, now there are two different ways of doing this one. There's the method that we're going to go through here, and then I actually have a preferred method um, otherwise afterwards. So we're going to look to prove the identity that tan 2 theta is equal to 2 over cot theta minus tan theta. A good starting point would be to know the identity for tan 2 theta. I definitely agree with that. Just to remind yourself of the identity for tan 2 theta, it goes 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta, and you can see already it's virtually the same, or very nearly the same as the uh, identity we're trying to prove. So I think that's then where we'll start. We'll start with tan 2 theta is equal to um, 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. <clears throat> now with the fraction type of trigonometric identities, um, remember that you can times the top and bottom by a, an, an amount, and you can divide the top and bottom by an amount as well. And as long as you're times in the top by the same thing as you're times in the bottom by, or dividing the top by the same thing you're dividing the bottom by, you're going to get um, something that is equivalent. Now, just match up the numerators for a second here. You've got 2 here, and you've got 2 tan here. So ideally we want to get rid of the tan that's on top of this numerator. So what we're going to do in this case here is we're going to divide all terms in the fraction by tan theta. Effectively doing a divide by tan theta over tan theta. That's going to keep the expression equivalent, but it's going to change the expression a little bit. So we're dividing by tan on the top and we're dividing by tan on the bottom. Now what's going to happen here, let's just look at the numerator for a second. 2 tan theta divided by tan theta. Great, tan thetas will cancel out there just to give us a 2. And then on the bottom, everything is going to have to divide by tan as well. So it's going to be 1 divided by tan theta minus tan squared divided by tan theta. So let's go ahead and simplify all three of the elements that we have here. 2 tan theta divided by tan theta is just 2. 1 divided by tan theta is cot theta. And tan squared theta divided by tan theta is tan theta. And this proves our identity. This proves that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Now what you could do here is you could start with 2 over cot theta minus tan theta and have in your mind that really we would like a tan theta on the top and the only thing we're going to do here different to the way we did this one here is just do it in reverse we're going to multiply tan theta over tan theta and in this case we're going to get 2 tan theta on the top and we're going to multiply tan thetas on the bottom cot times tan is just 1 tan times tan is tan squared which is equal to tan 2 theta. So you've got two different ways of doing that. You can generally go from right to left and left to right, whichever way you choose. But yeah, it's probably easier going with the more complicated thing first. In my opinion, that was the fraction and going to the simplified identity next. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. And in this case here, it's, the, uh, it's going to be an angle addition rule or an angle subtraction rule, very similar to how we did these in the previous video. Prove that the square root of 3 cos 4 theta plus sine 4 theta is equal to 2 cos 4 theta minus pi by 6. Now we've got a way in which we can go from this side to this side. But if you're given this answer, probably just easier just to expand this answer here and show that it equals the left hand side. So start by doing right hand side and writing out the angle addition rule um, uh, formula. So for cos and it's a negative, it's going to be cos 4 theta cos pi by 6 plus sine 4 theta sine pi by 6. Simplify the cos and the sine pi by 6, that's 30 degrees. So sine will become a half and cos will become root 3 over 2. 
and then cancel out the twos as fractions. We've nicely got two at the front of both of our expressions here. So cancel out them there, and this equals the right-hand side. So once again, we've shown that right-hand side is equal to left-hand side. My apologies, yeah, left-hand side. Okay, that's all we're going to do in this video here. It's your turn to have a go at simplifying these uh, questions here then. What I would Right, okay then, let's get start to go through these questions here then. So what I think we'll do is we'll probably start with the left-hand side of the first one. Um, based on the fact we've got a cos 2 theta and a sine 2 theta, and this is going to give us a tan. So I'm thinking immediately expand the cos 2 theta and expand the sine 2 theta. Um, but ideally I want to end up with sine over cos. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the version of the cos 2 theta one that will give me a sine squared because I'm going to ultimately want to have sine squared over cos squared. So I'm going to do 1 minus 2 sine squared theta as my expansion for cos 2 theta and for sine 2 theta there's only one of those so I'm just going to have to use it 2 sine theta cos theta. Now, being very careful of expanding my brackets correctly here, if I'm subtracting a negative, that makes it positive. And 1 minus 1 cancels out. So this is going to simplify to 2 sine squared theta over 2 sine theta cos theta. And cancel out 2s from top and bottom, cancel out sines from top and bottom. You end up with sine theta over cos theta, which is equal to tan theta which is equal to the right-hand side. Perfect, I've proved that, so little square just to finish things off. Nice. Okay, now second one here, a little bit more tricky to get started on. What I would suggest we get started on is thinking about what relationship we have in terms of sine and cos. So, sorry, uh, tan and sec, I mean. So sine squared plus cos squared equals one. And then to create the sec and tan identity, I need to divide by cos squared. So cos squared theta, cos squared theta, cos squared theta. So remember, I can rearrange little sub identities down the side here. I can't rearrange uh, and move over to the other side uh, any of the main identity. So this is going to be tan squared theta plus 1 equals sec squared theta. Okay, um, so in this case here, uh, what we can probably do then is start off, we want it in terms of sec, but this here is really going to be 1 over cos 2 theta, so I'm going to write that out there just to give me a little bit of a chance. I think what I'm going to do here is, uh, oh I know, I'm going to times the top and bottom of this fraction by cos. There we are. Yeah, that's the breakthrough for this question here then. So take the left hand side. I don't think we're going to actually need this actually then, but we'll leave it there just in case. Uh, left hand side is equal to sec squared theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. And I'm going to times top and bottom by cos squared. Why am I going to do this? Well, if I have um, sec squared theta times cos squared theta, both of those will cancel out. So I end up with a 1 on the top. I'm looking for 1 over cos 2 theta here. Um, so I'm looking for something to appear on the bottom specifically. Now I need to times by cos squared on the bottom. This is going to give me cos squared theta. And then it's going to give me minus, um, and in this case here it's going to be tan squared theta times cos squared theta, but if we remember, sine squared is going to be cos, blah, blah, blah. tan squared is going to be sine squared theta over cos squared theta, and if I times by cos squared theta, then I'm going to get these two cancelling out, and I'll just be left with sine squared theta. And all of a sudden now, I've got a sine, I've got a cos 2 theta double angle formula rule appear on the denominator of my fraction here. The next thing that I need to do is just now turn this into sec 2 theta because that is ultimately what the right hand side 
is. I've just written this out there just to help me along the way a little bit. And this equals to the right hand side. Excellent, good stuff. Now that was a tricky one. I was expecting to go along this sort of route here where I've got tan squared plus one equals sex squared because I've got a sex squared and a tan squared in this question here. Um, but instead, the trick here was to times the top and the bottom of a fraction by cos squared and that ended up at one over cos two theta. As I say, you do need lots of practice of this. Um, you may go down the wrong route to start with, like I did here, and then eventually you may spot it, especially with fractions, probably going to be a case of times and top and bottom by some value. All right, then, so get lots of practice on exercise 7F. Make sure you have a go at all of the standard trig identity questions and the problem solving, the exam style questions as well. And uh, thanks for watching. Persevere through the difficult ones and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Yeah, thanks for watching.